Okay, let's start the session now. Uh, good morning and welcome you all in this AI 102 session. Myself, Archie this said, I'm your host for this session. Guys, if you uh, if you have any question and queries, please put question on chat box. We will be there to help you out. Let's move ahead and talking about event sponsor. Uh, event sponsor that is Synergetic. So Synergetic is an India one of kind co-porting learning solution company. So now you will get a question like who we are and what we're doing. So answering your question, we bruise through our offering and also give comprehensive advisory service to client who wish to modernize their framework and we educate, advise and implement and manage. Then the Synergetic solution offering that is Persona based onboarding solution, onboarding add on solution, certification solution, certification add on solution, reskilling solution, emerging technology training solution, certification hackathon solution, cloud adoption solution, latest technology training solution, sales and pre sales training solution, practice and playbook solution, and architecting solution. Then what this Microsoft certification does, it will give you complete learning experience. You will get you will get trained and will appear for the exam and get certified. This is skilling journey here. You can advance yourself first to you have to complete fundamental certification. Then you can go with the advanced role based certification then an expert level certification. In fundamental certification, we have ASA 900, AI 900, DP 900, PL 900, and SC 900. In associate level certification, we have many types of certification. Here you can see on my screen. In expert level certification, we have AZ 305, SC 100, PL 600, and AZ 400. Guys, also we have special special certification that is AZ120, AZ140, and AZ220. If you want any certification, please connect us. We already share contact details on chat box. And certification offering. Certification will help you to increase your visibility, expand your knowledge and skills. We do provide certification add-on, onboarding add-on like short duration modules and more. And then moving ahead and today training is organized and handled by the ATC, ATC community. So our ATC community is open to all the people who are interested in our cloud technology and various emerging technology. Under ATC community, we have emerging technology community for all. Then Azure Tech community for Pune Kars. Emerging technology community for Surat Kars. Azure Tech community for Nagpur Gas. Guys, you just have to install the Meetup app and you can follow our communities there. Then you have to follow code of conduct, which will create a respectful environment for all the participants. Please note that participants are not allowed to take screenshot of the presentation and cannot do screen recording. We will try to upload this training on our official YouTube channel. Today's speaker for this training is Ms. Shah. He is a Microsoft certified trainer and currently work with Synergetics as a trainer consultant. Agenda for this webinar, you will get to know more about this topic and benefit of it. In one day webinar, we are providing you one day session and, and coming with a self learning plan. We are providing you AI 102 uh, learning achievement badges. Then mentoring and exam prep session, we are providing you if you want any question, you can submit a question in our feedback form. Then knowledge assessment before end of before end of the session, we are providing you assessment. You can give your test and check your knowledge. Here you can see AI 102 learning complementary achievement badge. Here you can uh, follow the step and you will get the activated badge. Make sure guys you follow us on our LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube for our upcoming webinar and upcoming uh, updates. Thank you, participants. And now I would like to hand over this mic our speaker. He will continue ahead. Thank you, Archie. All right, so good morning once again to everyone. My name is Mitsha. Before we go ahead, I will just give a brief introduction about myself. I'm a Microsoft certified trainer. On top of that, I'm an Azure certified data scientist as well as a Azure certified AI engineer. 
and I've been delivering training in the field of data science in the past six years, as I mentioned. Uh, and I've delivered training for many corporate clients like LTM, Entry, Deloitte, TCS, and many, many more. In total, I've delivered training for more than 10,000 data science professionals. So yeah, that's all about me. Now, let's go ahead and let's start our webinar for today. So guys, in today's webinar, you will be understanding how you can use AI using the Azure platform. I repeat, in this webinar, you will be understanding how you can use AI, how you can use artificial intelligence using the AI platform. So let's start by understanding first, what is AI? So you must be hearing this term a lot, right? So if anybody asks you what is AI, what will you say? What is the definition of AI? So guys, AI is nothing but a self AI is nothing but a set of tools that is used for two purposes. First purpose is to get inferences from data, or in other words, to get insights from data. Okay. The second purpose is to get predictions from data. So let's say based on how it has rained till the year 2023, I want to predict how it will rain in the year 2024, right? So that's an example of prediction. So if anybody asks you, what is AI? You will say AI is a set of tools that is used for two purposes. First is to get inferences from data. Second is to get predictions from data. Now, how do we do that? How do we get inferences and predictions from data? We do that by using something called a AI model, okay? How do we get inferences and predictions from data? We do that by using something called a AI model. Now, what is this AI model all about? Let's go ahead and let's talk about it. Okay, so guys, AI model is nothing but a statistical representation. It is nothing but a statistical representation of a real world process. Okay, it's a statistical representation of a real world process. Now, what do I mean by this complex statement over here? Let's understand it with the help of an example. So for example, let's say I have housing related data. I have surveyed some of the houses in my locality and I have obtained their data. So let's say I have information about the area of the house in square feet. And apart from that, I also have information about the price of the house. Okay, and let me go ahead and let me display that data to you. Let's suppose the first house that I surveyed had an area of 100 square feet and the price was 1 crore. The second house that I surveyed had an area of 200 square feet and the price was let's say 2 crore. Let's assume that the third house that I surveyed had an area of 300 square feet and the price was 3 crore. So now if somebody asks you that let's suppose you encountered a fourth house whose area is 400 square feet, but you don't know the price of the house, you want to predict the price of the house. Can anybody give me a rough prediction for the price of this fourth house over here? Can anybody give me a rough prediction in the chat based on the data? Correct. So one uh, participant has mentioned, Anirbar and other participant has mentioned that according to them, the prediction of the price for this house will be 4 crore. So Anirban, can I say buddy that you arrived at this prediction using some mathematics in your head? Can I say that Anirban? That you arrived at this prediction of 4 crore using some mathematics in your head. Can I say that? Although it was very basic mathematics that you applied, right? For this particular data set, but you did apply some mathematics. So what did you do Anirban over here? You tried to simulate what would have happened in the real world using mathematics, using statistics. I repeat Anirban, what you and other people did, you guys tried to simulate what would have happened in the real world using mathematics or using statistics. And that's exactly what an AI model also does. It's just that Anirban and other guys here for this data set, 
you applied very basic mathematics, very basic statistics in your head. Whereas a AI model applies complex statistics. Okay. Uh, that's the only difference. But just like you arrived at this prediction using some mathematics in your head or using some statistics in your head, a AI model would also do the same. All right. So up till now, we have learned about two definitions. First is what is AI? So AI is a set of tools that is used for two purposes. First is to get inferences from data. Second is to get predictions from data. Now, how do we do that? How do we get inferences and predictions from data? We do that by using something called a machine learning model. Oh, sorry, my mistake. We do that by using something called a AI model, right? So how does AI get inferences and predictions from data? AI does that by using something called a AI model. So what is a AI model? It's a statistical representation of a real world process. In simple words, we are trying to simulate a real world process using some statistics or using some mathematics. So I hope these two definitions are clear to each and every one of you. First definition was what is AI? Second definition was what is an AI model? Okay. Now, guys, AI is divided into two types. First is machine learning. Second is deep learning. So just like machine learning can be used to obtain inferences and predictions. Similarly, deep learning can also be used to obtain inferences and predictions. But what is the difference? Well, I won't dive into the uh, details of it, but I'll just give you a basic difference just so that we can start off this webinar. OK, uh, so you can assume machine learning to be like a knife. On the other hand, you can assume deep learning to be something like a machete. OK, now a question for you. Let's say you want to cut something. Now for that, you can use a knife as well as a machete, right? But suppose if you want to cut some basic things like vegetables, uh, fruits like apple uh, and other basic fruits, right? In that scenario, if you want to cut these basic things like basic vegetables, basic fruits, what will you use? Will you use a knife or will you use a machete? What would be ideal? In theory, you can use both, I agree. But what will you use? Let's say you want to cut a vegetable. What would you use? A knife or a machete? What will you use? Mohammed, Anirban, can anybody answer? For cutting basic things, what will you use? So one person in the chat mentioned that he will use a knife. Absolutely correct, right? For cutting basic things, you would use a knife. Similarly, guys, if you are working on a very basic data set, if you are working on very basic day-to-day uh, -day data set, like your tabular data set, right? that you see in your Excel. On that data set, you would apply machine learning models. OK, why? Why would you apply? Well, just like on a basic vegetable, you know, to cut it, you will use a knife, right? Why? First of all, it is cheaper. That is one reason. Second, ease of usage, right? So why to unnecessarily complicate it? Because to use a machete, uh, I mean, you have to uh, make sure that uh, you can handle its complexity, right? Not every person can use a machete effectively. So just like why would you use a knife? First was cost, right? One factor could be cost that knife is cheaper, right? Uh, similarly, if you apply machine learning models on your data set, it, it proves to be cheaper. Now remember, that whenever you try to apply any model, some computation is involved in the backend. And mostly people try to build their models on some cloud platform. Now, whenever do you do any computation on a cloud platform, you get charged for it. You get uh, uh, charged for it, right? Some amount of money you have to lose. So it's generally proved that if you apply machine learning models, it's usually cheaper for you, okay? So why would you prefer machine learning model on a tabular data set on a basic data set? First is it's cheaper. Second is it is less complex to use. OK, similarly, guys, let me take another example. Now, let's say you want to cut, you know, advanced things like let's say you want to cut a coconut or uh, any other advanced object. OK, in that case, what will you use if you if you want to uh, cut a coconut? Will you use a knife or will you use a machete? 
Out of the two things, what would you use? Anshuman, can anyone answer? If let's say I want to cut a coconut, what would I use? In that case, I would use a machete, right? I, I hope you would agree. If I want to cut a coconut, in that case, I would use a machete. Why? So on you are saying that on advanced things, like let's say a coconut whose shell is hard, it cannot be effectively cut by a knife. On that case, you would use a machete. Similarly, guys, let's say if you have, uh, you know, some advanced data sets, like let's say you have a data set containing images or you have a data set containing videos, okay? In that scenario, it is better that you apply a deep learning model. In theory, on any data set, you can apply any type of model. Okay, uh, I can apply a machine learning model on a tabular data set. I can apply deep learning model on a tabular data set. Similarly, I can apply machine learning model on an image data set. I can apply deep learning model on an image data set. In theory, I can apply any type of model on any type of data set. It's not a issue. Okay, you won't get any error or something. However, it's generally seen that if you have a simple tabular data set, in that case, it's better to apply machine learning models. One reason is it's cheaper to use. Second reason is it is less complex to use. In order to build a machine learning model, you won't have that much of complexity. Okay. Uh, whereas if you do not have a simple data set with you, let's say you have a complex data set, like let's say something like images or videos, right? In such a case, it is better to apply a deep learning model. Fine. So remember this basic difference. I won't go into uh, the depth of it. OK, uh, I'm just giving a basic difference just so that you have enough information to start off. Uh, the webinar today. Fine. So up till now, what have we learned? First, we learned the definition of AI. Second, we learned the definition of AI model. Third, we learned that AI is divided into two types, machine learning and deep learning. And we learned that machine learning has to be applied on simple tabular data sets. Deep learning has to be applied on complex data sets like images or videos. OK, fine. So let's go ahead and let's start off the main part of our webinar. So guys, as I mentioned earlier, that in this webinar, we will be learning about how you can use AI services using Azure. OK, so Azure offers various category of AI services over here. OK, Azure offers various category of AI services. First is Azure Open AI service. So in this service, Azure gives you access to Open AI models. So we, you would have heard that Open AI has a tie up with Azure. So whatever models Open AI releases into the Internet, uh, these same models are available in Azure also. So if you want to try out the open AI models on Azure, you can use that. There is a service available for it. So that is the first category of service that Azure offers. Second category of service is Azure AI search. OK, so let's say I want to do some advanced search. Like let's say, for example, this particular image is uh, in which folder of my Google Drive, right? Uh, such advanced search if you want to perform. You can use Azure AI search service for the same. So Azure AI search is used to perform advanced search operations that is not available to you in your day to day uh, setting. OK, so if you want to perform some advanced search, you can use Azure AI search service for the same. Now the third service that Azure offers is Azure AI content safety. So let's say you own a YouTube channel. You want to make sure that whatever comments are being put out on the YouTube channel are uh, you know are not that offensive it's not inappropriate or whatever now if you try to uh, review your youtube comments manually one by one it will take you a lot of time because maybe let's say uh, anshuman has a youtube channel anshuman is a big influencer he would have a lot of comments in his youtube channel right now anshuman anshuman wants to make sure that whatever comments he is receiving in his video is not inappropriate OK, now will he review the YouTube comments one by one? No, what he will do is, is he will use some AI uh, Azure AI content uh, safety service. And what this service does is that it automatically reviews uh, the data, whether that data is in uh, textual format, 
whether it is in image format, whether it is in video format, and it would automatically see whether the content that is mentioned in it is inappropriate or not. So you don't have to review the content yourself manual. OK, so you can use this AI service. You can even integrate it to other third party applications like let's say YouTube or some other third party application. Fine. So third category of services Azure AI content safety. Fourth category of services Azure AI translator. OK, so let's say I have uh, written my book. OK, let's say I have published a book in English language. Now I want to translate it to different different languages. Now if I hire a translator, uh, it could be a little costly, right? If I have let's say Anshuman works as a translator. If I hire him, maybe his fees are too high. I cannot afford him for now. But you want to uh, complete your job. You want to translate your book in different languages. What you can do? You can use Azure AI translator service. This will do the translator job in a much uh, cheaper manner. Okay. Uh, it is not uh, at all costly. It's very, very cheap. So that is the fourth category of service that uh, Azure offers. The fifth category of service is Azure AI speech. Okay, so let's say I'm speaking something in English. Now let's say some people uh, who are in the webinar today are not so proficient in English. Let us assume. Let's say they are proficient in uh, a Tamil language. Okay, so what we can do is we can use Azure AI speech and it automatically translate your speech from one language to another in real time. So let's say I'm speaking something in English in real time. Automatically it will be converted to some other language like right? let's say Tamil. So if let's say the Tamil audience over here, let's say if they don't know English, then they can listen to my Tamil uh, commentary. So uh, we can use Azure AI speech for the same. It converts speech from one language to another in real time. Remember. Okay. The sixth category of service that Azure offers is Azure AI Vision. OK, uh, now whatever. Uh, we are seeing uh, whatever data we are seeing, whether it is the data in text format, whether it's the data in image format, whether it's the data in video format. OK, if you want to analyze that data, you can go ahead and use this sixth category of service called Azure AI Vision service. What it does, it analyzes the data. That data could be in text format. OK, so it, it says that uh, whatever data you see, OK, you can go ahead and analyze it. Whether the data is in text format, whether the data is in image format, whether the data is in video format, OK. Uh, you can see your data, you can perform analysis on it. Now, the seventh category of service that Azure offers is Azure AI language. OK, uh, so it's similar to what you have been uh, it's similar to the services that you have seen earlier, uh, but here uh, there is one more thing involved, uh, which is you can create bots as well. OK, conversational bots. So let's say for your website, you want to build a conversational bot. OK, uh, in that case, you can use this service if you want. Now. Uh, the last category of service that Azure offers is Azure AI document intelligence. Now let's say I have my data stored in the form of PDFs. OK, let's say I get my invoices. So whatever work I do for my company, let's say after the month ends, I get an invoice for it. OK, that OK. Now Smith Shah will get so and so rupees for this month of service. Now that data is will be in PDF format, right? I would want to convert it to let's say tabular format. How would I do it? I can use Azure AI document intelligence for the same. It will basically scan any document that you put in front of it and it will uh, gather the data in the document and then it will paste the data in any format that you want. Let's say if you want to paste the data in tab tabular format, it will go ahead and do that for you. So these are the category of services that Azure offers. We will be looking at some of these services today. We won't be able to cover all but we'll be uh, seeing how we can use some of these services. OK, so today our goal will be to cover some of these services. Not all. We won't be able to cover all. OK, now I have some uh, questions in the chat. Let me answer those. So Rinkita says, can individuals use Azure OpenAI service? It needs an application to be submitted and approved. Uh, so 
ही विदाउट यू बिल्डिंग एप्लीकेशन सो देर आर ऑलरेडी ओपनिंग आई मॉडल आउट यूर ऑल यू नीड टू डू इज यू नीड टू यूज दैम ओके नाउ यू कैन यूज दैम एज एस दी के लाइक यू सेट दैट यू कैन यूज दी ओपनिंग आई मॉडल and uh, make a application out of it that means you can use it as a sdk like you mentioned in the chat or even without it even if you do not use it as a sdk uh, it it is directly available as a api you can go ahead and use it as a api as well so it's not necessary uh, venkata that you have to uh, create a application out of it okay it's not necessary that you have to create a sdk out of it no without it also you can use buddy okay uh, so it's very very easy it's not difficult at all fine so as i mentioned guys these are the category of services that azure offers and we'll be looking into some of these services over here fine let's go ahead so what i will do is let me gather some data uh, let me focus on let's say what should i focus on uh, let me start with something interesting Okay, let me start with Azure AI speech. Let me take the service in the middle, Azure AI speech. So let's say I want to translate speech from one language to another. How would I do that? Okay, let's go ahead and let's see. So what I will do is first I will go to the Azure platform and I will ask Azure platform that please Azure, I am going to use your speech AI service. So please allow me to do the same. and please give me the necessary authentication okay i repeat i i will go to azure platform and i will ask azure that please azure i am going to use your speech ai service so please allow me and give me the necessary authentication details okay so let's go so on the search bar i will search for azure ai services and i will click on the first option that i see in the search results let me click on it and now what i want to do i wanted to show you a demo on this category of service called azure ai speech okay so let me go ahead and use the speech service the option to use the speech service is available over here on the left hand side let me go ahead and let me click on it now whatever service i want to use in azure it has to be used as a resource i repeat whatever service you want to use in azure okay it's not just ai service that uh, you can use in azure there are other services that azure offers right so whatever service you want to use in azure it has to be used as a resource so let me create a speech uh, let me create a resource for the speech service okay so i'll click on the create button and this will create a resource for the speech service okay what it will do it will create a resource for the speech service fine so let me go ahead let me click on the create button over here and uh, when i click on the create button i am redirected to a form which i have to fill so let me go ahead and uh, let me fill out the form now before i go ahead and do that uh, there are some questions in the chat let me answer those shri devi mentions can you please share the products Uh, slash ai services link which you are sharing okay okay yes sure i'll just copy this link and i will paste it in the chat for you okay then uh, i have a question from prathamesh uh, prathamesh is can we use the services for free for learning purpose well some of the services you will be able to use it for free okay not all now even with your free tier right even with your free tier there are certain limitations that you can only use the service up to a certain point of time so to answer your question prathame shares you can use it for free for learning purposes but even for free tier there are certain limitations okay but yes to answer your question yes you can use it for free uh, you have free tiers available for many of these services not all but yeah for many of these services you have free tier in one okay so all right uh, let's go ahead now so basically what i was doing over here i was trying to show you a demo of how you can use this speech service so i'm creating a resource for the speech service over here all right so in order to create that resource i have to fill out this form let me go ahead and do that 
Now the first field in the form is subscription. Okay. So here you have to choose the subscription of your choice. Remember, guys, that in one account you can have more than one subscriptions. So for example, I have this account called smithsha 397 gmail.com. Here I can have more than one subscriptions. Maybe in one subscription I have thousand rupees. Maybe in another subscription I have 20 rupees. Maybe in the third one I have 50 rupees. Now let's say what work I am doing. I know it will cost me more than let's say 300 to 400 rupees. Now if it is going to cost me more than 300 to 400 rupees, I cannot use the second subscription, right? It does not have that many credits. Similarly, if I know that my work is going to cost me 300 to 400 rupees, I cannot use the third subscription as well. Because again, it does not have the required credits. So in that case, what will, you, will I do? I'll use the first subscription. So you have to choose the subscription of your choice, uh, depending on how much credits you have left. Okay. Uh, so yeah, uh, choose the subscription of your choice. Uh, however, in my account, I just have one active subscription with. There were other subscriptions that I had in my account, but I deleted those. Okay. Currently, there is only one active subscription. So that's fine. Now, uh, this resource that we are creating for the speech service will fall within some of the other resource group. In Azure, whatever resource you are creating for any service, not just the AI service, for any service, whatever resource you are creating in Azure has to fall within some of the other resource group. Okay. Uh, now, there are many reasons for it. One reason is better resource management. So, for example, let's say I'm creating a project for which I created 20 resources. Okay, I uh, had a project for which I wanted to create 20 resources. Let's say one was a uh, speech resource, second was MongoDB resource, third was SQL resource, and so on. Okay, let's say I created 20 resources. Now let's say that project is done after six months and after six months now these 20 resources are of no use for me. So what will I do? I will delete the 20 resources, right? So that I don't incur more cost. Well, will you delete the 20 resources one by one? That will be very tedious. Instead, why don't we put these 20 resources inside one resource group? And whenever the time for deletion comes, I can delete the entire resource group altogether. With that, all the resources in the resource group will automatically get deleted. So for better resource management, uh, we can use a resource group. Okay, a resource group uh, is a topic that you will encounter a lot in Azure. Whenever you are creating a resource in Azure, that resource will have to fall within some of the other resource groups. It's mandatory. Okay, uh, there are many benefits of that one example that I said is resource management. Okay, uh, second uh, benefit is what? Uh, let me show that to you. So for example, let's say you created 20 resources for your project. Now, or uh, let's say first resource, uh, you had to be charged around 100 rupees. For second resource, you got charged 23 rupees. For third resource, you got charged 2,500 rupees and so on. Okay, now you want to calculate the total cost incurred by your project. What will you do? You will co calculate the cost for each of the 20 resources one by one. At the end, you will take the sum of all the costs, right? That is one approach, but that is very tedious. Instead, why don't I put these 20 resources that belong to the same project inside the same resource group? And when the time for cost calculation comes, I can directly go to the resource group and see the cumulative cost of all the resources in it. Okay, that's very, very a uh, simple way to find out the total cost of your group. So uh, this is the second benefit of this group. Like that there are many more benefits. Fine. Uh, what I'll do is uh, I want this resource for my speech service to fall within some of the other resource group. So let me create a new resource group over here. I will call it test RG. Fine. Now the third field in the form is asking me to select a region for the resource. Uh, now I can select any region over here. Make sure that you choose a region that is closer to your user. Let's say I'm creating this resource for a user in the United States. So I will choose a region over here that is closer to United States just for better latency. Okay, just for better latency. So if you have a resource deployed in uh, US, 
obviously the us users uh, will have better latency as compared to asia users right uh, fine so choose any region that you want over here uh, then the next field in the form is asking me to mention the name for the resource so let me give it a name i will call it test speech syn short form for synergetics so test speech synergetics okay uh here you have to make sure that whatever name you enter has to be unique across asia so for example if i try to enter this name called test speech you can see it gives me an error message saying that this name has already been used by someone so pick a different name fine i'll pick a different name this name is unique so that's fine now at last i have to choose the pricing tier for the resource uh now i have exhausted my a uh, free tier for this service that's why i do not get the option to use the free tier over here okay but if you are uh, using this service for the first time you will see that option of free tier as well okay but here i do not get the option of free tier there is only one option available to me which is standard tier so that's fine so that means it will be chargeable it will not be free okay all right after that what i will do is i want to keep other settings as it is i want to keep network settings that is as it is i don't want to change anything in the identity settings i don't want to change anything in the tag related settings i directly want to jump to review plus create so here there is a button to directly jump to review plus create i'll go ahead and click on it and when i do that azure will validate each and everything entered by me it will check that whatever i'm asking for can actually be given to me so it runs a final validation and once the validation ends here i get a validation error let's see what is the issue an existing resource acha with the same name has been soft deleted okay so uh, just before this webinar uh, i created the resource with the same name although i deleted it but that name uh, but i created a resource with the same name so it is saying that for a few hours i cannot use this thing or what i'll do is i'll change the name let me call it res test speech resource Fine. Let me run the final validation again. Ah, huh. now the validation is successful, and I'll click on the create button, and it will create create the resource for the speech service for me. Okay, it will take around one or two minutes. We'll wait till then. I'll answer the questions in the chat. Ah, uh, Somitra says, how do you create subscription for ah uh, Azure Cloud? Okay. So, Somitra, for that uh, you will have to first create a account in the Azure portal, and second, uh, you will have to, you know, put some money into your Azure account. When you put some money into your Azure account, that is treated as a subscription. Okay. The first step is to create a account. Second, put some money into that account. Okay, you will get the option on on the right hand side. On the right hand side, in your uh, account settings, you will get that option. Once you put money, you will have a active subscription with. Uh, Somitra says not finding Azure portal. You want the link of the Azure portal? Is that what you are saying? It's portal dot azure dot com. Okay, the link is portal dot azure dot com. I'll show it to you. This is the link portal dot azure dot com. You can see. Okay. Uh, then uh, Somitra says there is another logo for Azure AI yeah, like cloud. I'm not able to get it. This is the link for the Azure portal, and uh, whatever service Azure offers will be available through this link. Whether it's AI service that Azure offers, whether it's other services that Azure offers. Will be available through this link. This is the link portal dot azure dot com. Okay. So Andhra says for free account also you need subscription. No, for free account Azure will give you some money in your account automatically, and it automatically creates that subscription for you. So no, for free account you don't need to put in money. Is this that for a free account Azure will give? I I guess uh the limit that Azure has set is around hundred dollars. If I am not wrong. Okay, previously it was hundred. Now if it has changed, I have no idea. But previously we used to get hundred dollars in our free account. So Azure automatically sends hundred dollars in our free account, and we can use 
Azure services up to a price limit of hundred dollars. So in that scenario, Sonitra, Azure automatically puts money into your account and it automatically creates the subscription. You don't have to create. Okay, fine. Now let's go ahead, guys. Our resource for the speed service has been created. We'll go to the resource. And uh, I just need two things to use the resource. First is the key. Okay, uh, that is the main thing. And what is the second? I will explain that to you ahead. So I will go to the keys and endpoints section over here and obtain the key. Okay, so just like in order to gain access to our house, we need a key, right? Similarly, in order to gain access to this resource, we need a key over here. I'll show the keys to you. Here you can observe there are two keys. So just like in our house, we have two keys, right? One is our main key, second one is the backup. So that if in case something happens to the first key, at least you can use the second one. So similarly, here guys, here we have two keys. You can use any one of them. It's just that two keys are provided. Why one extra is provided just for backup purposes. So that if anything gets, uh, anything, uh, you know, creates an issue for the first key, at least you have the second key with you. All right. And you can use any one out of these two keys, up to you. All right, fine. Let's go ahead. And what I will do now is, guys, I will start by writing our code. So I'll create a folder. I'll call it AI102 webinar. AI 102 webinar. Let me create a folder. Let me open up that folder in Visual Studio Code. And what I will do is I will try to use the resource that I created over here. Okay, with the help of code. So we'll try to use the resource that we just created with the help of code in Python programming language. Now, if you guys are not familiar with Python programming language, the, maybe the syntax of what I'm writing won't make sense. But the reason why I'm writing that line of code will definitely be clear to you. I will explain the reason behind writing each line of code. So don't do it. Okay. Uh, obviously, if you're very new to Python, syntax won't make sense. It's fine. Uh, main thing that you should know is why we are writing that line of code. All right. Now, let's go ahead. I'll create a new folder over here. I'll call it uh, teach service. Let me create a file in it. I'll call it test.py. Test.python. All right. Now, let's go ahead. So, what I will do uh, is in order to validate my validate whether the key that I will provide later is correct or not. Okay, I will need a, a class which I will go ahead and import. So from Azure dot core dot credentials. I will try to import this class called Azure key credential. So from Azure folder, there is another subfolder called core. Inside the subfolder, I have a file called credentials. And from that file, I'm trying to import this class called Azure key credential. Okay, now uh, let's go ahead. I'm just wondering, do I need this? Uh, I guess even without that, I can make my code work. So let me try without that. My mistake. Uh, I mean, I can use this also, but let me try without. There are many ways to use the resource. Anyways, let's go ahead. Uh, so let me do one thing. What I will do is in this scenario. First of all, I will store the key. To access the resource. So what is the key? Let me go ahead and let me check. Uh, the key is present over here. I'll just copy it. I can use any one out of these two keys, guys. It won't matter. Let me go ahead and let me paste the key. So that is the first thing that I have done. Okay, I've mentioned the key of my resource. Second thing that I will try to do is uh, 
I will try to mention the region in which this resource lies. OK, so let me go ahead and let me mention the region in which the resource lies. So I will say that the resource lies in East US region. Fine. Next, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and uh, mention these details to Azure and tell Azure that uh, using these details, please give me access to the speech resource. OK, so I want to say please give me access to speech resource. Now, in order to do that, in order to gain access, uh, I will have to do one thing over here. Let me go ahead and let me import the file. Or I should say import the folder. So from Azure folder, there is another subfolder called cognitive services. Inside that, there is another subfolder called speech. I'm uh, calling that subfolder as speech SDK. So inside this subfolder called speech SDK, there is another subfolder called translation. Now inside that, uh, uh, sorry, there is uh, inside this subfolder called speech SDK, there is a file called translate uh, translation. Now inside the file, okay, inside the file, I have a class called speech translation config. And I need to do, I need to pass two things in it. First is the key of my resource and second is the region where my resource lies. If I pass these two things, I will get access to my speech resource. Okay, I'll get access to my speech resource. Fine. Now, once I get gain access to my speech resource, what next I have to do? That we'll see. Now, Swamitra has a doubt. Why you created two keys? Swamitra, I didn't create two keys. Azure automatically creates two keys for any resource that we create. Any resource that you create in Azure, it creates two keys. Now, just for your house, uh, Somitra, for example, uh, you would have two keys, right? I'm assuming. Somitra, yes, for your house, you would have at least two keys with you, if not more. Right? Why, why would... Huh, I mean, you have it available. I'm not saying that you carry two keys always. But you have it available with you. Ha, ha, you, out of the two, you use one. Agree. Absolutely agree, Sam. But you have at least two keys with you for your house. Why do you have the second key? Just for backup, right? So that if something happens to the first key, you can you, you at least you can use the second one. Now, sometimes what happens is sometimes the keys get corrupted. Let's say there is some attack onto the resource, and let's say the first key got corrupted. Okay, let's say the first key is, is exposed. OK, the, there was some hacker who reviewed our coding file. Let's say he found out the key. Now you want to disable that key that OK, hacker has found out that key. Let me disable that first key. But how will I use my resource till then? What will I do is I will use the second key till then. OK, till the problem is not sorted out, I'll use the second. Key. So that second key is just as a backup so that if something happens to the first one, you can use the second. However, technically you can use any one out of the two, up to you. OK, so uh, to answer your question, Somitra, why do you have the second key just for backup? And I have not created that second key. Azure itself creates. So for any resource that you create in Azure, Azure will create two keys for you. OK, and you can use any one of them up to you. I hope it's clear. Now uh, let's go ahead. So uh, OK. Saravana saying cognitive misspelling where? There is no mixed spelling. Where is there a mixed spelling? Cognitive. Spelling is correct. OK. I'm not sure where you are pointing out, but OK. If you are pointing out at some other place, let me know. All right. Now, uh, let me go ahead. Uh, I have gained access to the speech resource over here. Uh, now, what I will do is I will go ahead and mention the other details. So once I gain access to the speech resource, I will mention to my speech resource that I will be speaking something. Please convert it to other language. But whatever I'll be speaking, it will be in English language only. So don't worry about it. Yes, from English, you will have to convert from one language to another. But I will be, I will be speaking in English language only. So I will say that I will be speaking in English language. Uh, 
uh, the ascent now you will have to mention the ascent code as well now i can't speak in a uk accent so i will just mention us okay that uh, my accent would be close to uh, that i mean for english i guess you only have two options available us and uk uh, now I, uh, my accent is nowhere close to uk so i'll choose this option anyways it won't matter even if you write uk uh, that's fine even if your accent is not close to the uk accent still it will be able to detect it uh, in a fairly good way anyways uh, so what i'm saying over here once i gain access to my speech resource i am saying that whatever i'll be speaking it will be in e english language only okay from english you will have to convert to another language but whatever i'll be speaking will be in english language fine then i will be saying that from english language you have to convert to which language so i will add a target language over here I, so i am saying over here that from english you have to convert it to let's say french language from english uh, i would want to convert it to spanish language from english i might want to convert it to hindi language from english i might want to convert it to kannada language okay like that i can choose my target languages okay uh now uh, let's go ahead okay so i have mentioned all the details uh all the required details over here now let's go ahead before i go ahead there is one doubt in the chat let me address that so mohammed says can you explain how did you connect visual store for with azure portal mohammed i have not i have not done any connection up till now so mohammed this key that i am passing to these classes right this key and this uh, region that i am passing to these classes this will automatically act as a connection apart from that mohammed i have not done anything at all i have just opened visual studio code like we normally do and that's it no other connection i have done mohammed okay no other connection is required this is that in my code only i am passing that connection that okay please connect to that azure resource whose key is so and so and the region is so and so this line of code will act as a connection apart from that nothing else yes welcome okay uh, somatra says the code that you are writing is it available in github it might be uh, though uh i am skeptical because see what i am i'll be doing is i'll be converting speech from one language to another so i'll be putting speech let's say in english language and as a output as a output uh, let's say i will get speech in hindi language now on github you have code codes available for it uh, however i guess there what they are doing is they are converting speech let's say that is in english language to a output which is in textual format it's not in speech format it's in textual format so such code is available on the internet i am doubtful that what i am doing over here is available i will have to check okay but this is definitely available i have seen it on github many in many many repositories so this is definitely available but what i am doing i am skeptical of it i will have to see okay but don't worry uh, once i finish writing the code in this coding file i will give the code to you in the chat so you yourself can try it out okay so when you yourself can try it out all you will have to do is change the uh, key of the resource and change the region in which the resource lies based on what details you have provided in the azure code that's it apart from that rest of the things in the code will remain the same i'll give the code to you so don't worry okay fine uh, now uh, let's go ahead so i've mentioned the translation details right let me call it translation details so we are i have mentioned the translation details okay now let me go ahead and let me talk more about how i'll be speaking okay so whether i'll be speaking in my microphone or what i'll be doing so let me mention the speech configuration as well so for that i will write this line of code so from speech sdk folder 
uh, here what sorry in this from speech as the uh, file i have this class called speech config sorry i have this class called speech config over here for which i have to pass two things first is the key of my resource and second is the region in which the resource lies fine with this i will have the speech configuration with me now in this speech configuration i'll keep on adding more and more things like how will my speech be will it be coming from a microphone like my default microphone or some uh, other external microphone that is connected to my laptop how will it be so on and so forth okay uh, all right so let's go ahead and let me continue writing my code over here so what i will do is i will ask the a user first of all that please enter the target language we know that our input language will be of english but what will be our target language from english we have want to convert it to which other language so i'll ask the user to mention that i'll say enter a target language fr for french es for spanish hi for hindi and uh, kn for kannada okay all right it's called kannada right so you not kannada kannada all right so over here let me ask the user that and i'll run the code up till this point so what i will do is this code is written in test.py test.py is in this folder called speech service so let me open the terminal in this folder okay and now you can see when i did that when i open the terminal in this folder you can see the terminal link so now my terminal is connecting to this folder over here now i can say that please run this code so i'll click on the run button over here and it will ask me to select the python interpreter so i will say that choose the interpreter which is of 3.11 version fine once the interpreter is chosen i can again run the code i can run the code by pressing on this run button that is one option another option is here i can mention in the terminal that i want to run a python file called test.py okay and here i am getting a error saying that what i am trying to uh acha ha uh, your student was mentioning the incorrect spelling of cognitive i guess she was mentioning this one in my code i mentioned in uh, incorrect spelling yes thanks for pointing out uh, this is the mistake that i did cognitive Okay. Let me run the code once again. Ah, uh, it is asking me to enter a target language. Now, uh, fine. Ah, uh, it's currently asking me this in one sentence only. I'll divide this sentence across multiple lines. So let me write it in my code that I want to divide this across multiple lines. So this backward slash n special character. Divides the text into multiple lines, into new line. I should say. Fine. Uh, now let's go ahead. Let's see what happens now. Now you can see the readability of the sentence is much better in my. Okay. I'll enter a new line over here also. Okay. This is fine. Let me run the code once again. now the readability is even better so i am asking it to enter a target language let's say i enter something in hindi then uh, what i want to do is i will complete my code uh, now what i want to do is whatever input is obtained right that i will store in this variable called target language fine now based on the target language i will want my resource to perform that translation okay so i will say if whatever the user has entered is anything within these four target languages okay whatever the user has entered is anything within these four target languages then only perform the translation otherwise don't perform okay so whatever user enters let's say user enters something like fr now fr means french so yes that is one of our target languages then i will move ahead but let's say a user enters something like abc now abc does not stand for any language right 
So it's not pointing out to any of my specified target languages. In that case, I would not want to do any translation whatsoever. Okay. Uh, so all right, let's go ahead and let's see what to do next. So if the target language is not that, that means the user wants to quit. That means the user wants to quit. Okay. All right. And I will say until or unless the user wants to quit, keep on asking what the user wants to do. Okay. Unless and until the user wants to quit. Unless and until the user wants to quit. Keep on asking, keep on doing the translation. Okay. Fine. Perfect. So until unless the user wants to quit, I'll keep on doing the translation. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead. So uh, let me go ahead and let me mention the speech configuration. So I will say that whatever I'll be speaking, okay, whatever uh, I'll be speaking will be in uh, from my default microphone only. So I'll mention this line. And what I'm saying over here is that whatever I will be speaking will be from my default microphone. will be from my default microphone. So that is how the audio will be obtained by this resource. OK, that is how the audio will be obtained by the resource. Fine. After that, I would want it to do uh, a translation. So let me do one thing. First of all, I'll pass these details over here to the resource that I created. I will ask the resource to do the translation based on these configuration details. Okay, based on these configuration details. So first I would want the uh, resource to recognize my speech. Recognizing speech is one thing. Translation comes after that. Okay. I hope my spelling and everything is right. Recognizer. Oh, right. So I'll just go ahead, mention uh, my configuration details over here. Okay, so first I'll mention the translation details that how I want to translate. Second, I'll mention that whatever I will translate will be based on what audio I am uh, sending to my laptop, right? So that audio configuration also I will mention. Okay. Once all the configuration details are mentioned to the resource, the resource will be ready. So I will ask the user to speak now. I will ask the user to speak now. Okay. And whatever the user speaks based on that, the resource will try to recognize uh, my speech. Okay. So I will ask the resource that, okay, before doing the translation, please recognize my speech in one go. Please recognize my speech in one go and get the text out of it. Okay, please recognize my speech in one go. Recognize. Okay, I hope my spelling is right. Recognize in one go. Mm. Fine, perfect. So I'll, I'll be asking the user to speak. Once the user speaks, uh, the resource will try to understand what that user is speaking. Okay, and based on that, it will try to uh, gain an understanding of it. And whatever the resource has understood out of my speech, I will I will, I will just uh, print it. Okay, I will just go ahead and print it. That okay? This is what the user is uh, speaking. Okay, so I'll just go ahead and print it. That this is my original. This is my original. Uh, what I should say. Text. Okay, this is what I have spoken in my microphone. Once the resource understands what I have spoken, it will try to perform translation. Okay, so I will try to get that translation also. So let me go ahead and let me get that translation. So I'll just go ahead 
and get the translation as well. Let me go ahead and do that. Based on the target language, I will go ahead and get the translation. Fine. Uh, once the translation is obtained, okay. Once the translation is obtained, what I want to do next is that translation. I want to convert it to voice. Okay. So let me show you how to do that. Let me go ahead and show you how to do that. So what I have done first, my input will be in uh, voice. It is getting converted to text. Okay, that text. Uh, let's say in uh, English language is getting converted to text in uh, Hindi language. After that, it is getting converted to voice back. So let me convert it to voice back. All these steps are done. One, two, three. Okay, only last step is there. I want to convert it to voice. So let me go ahead and let me convert it. Now, based on the different languages, my voices will be different. Okay, so Azure supports multiple voices. Uh, so for French, it supports these uh, this voice called FR uh, Henry Neural. Okay, how would you know that? Uh, let me go ahead and let me show it to you. Now I already know these voices because I've worked with them a lot. But let's say you are new to it. How will you know the voices? Let me show that to you. So you can go to language support. And here you can have a look at various languages that are supported. And you can get the voice for it also. One second, let me check if in this page I can see the voice. No. Uh, then. Uh, OK, maybe your. Do I see the voice code? I wanted to show you the voice code so that you guys know where to get it. Voice code. Uh, is it mentioned that? So, OK, it's text to speech. Huh. Yes, yes, this is the voice code. So for French, right? For French, let me search. For French, uh, there would be something called Henry Neural. Ah, yes, here you can see. For French, there are a lot of voices supported. I'm choosing Henry Neural. Similarly, for Hindi, you will see voices. Okay, we have Swara Neural, we have Madhur Neural. We can choose any one of them, and there's the code that you can use. Right. So let me go ahead and let me mention it. My code. I'll just say that if the target language is Hindi, choose Madhur Neural. If the target language is Spanish, then choose a different voice. In this scenario, uh, I would prefer. What should I prefer? Uh, I guess for Spanish, if I'm not wrong, it was er Ervira Neural. Let me check. It was er Ervira Neural for Spanish. I'll just check though. Elvira. Is it Elvira? Uh, Elvira. Elvira. Ah, yes, here it is. For Spanish, one of the voices is El Elvira Neur. Okay, so let me go ahead, copy this voice code and paste it in my Python file. At last, if somebody wants to talk in a Kannada language, we have the voice code for that as well. Let me choose Gagan Europe. Fine, so I've done this. Now let's go ahead. Okay. Uh, so now whatever translation has been done, I want to convert it back to voice. So let me go ahead and let me do it. So here I have done some basic translation. Uh, and I would want to convert it to voice back. Okay, so I'll write this code. I will just say that please convert it to voice again based on the voice name that I'm providing. 
and how will you decide the voice name well it depends on the target language if the target language entered by the user was fr then use this voice code if the target language entered by the user was hi use this voice code and so on so i will say based on the target language choose the voice code okay based on the target language choose the voice code fine once the voice code has been chosen what next to do i will be using that voice code to generate voice from my text okay from my translated text i'll be generating the voice let me go ahead and do that go ahead and do this and that's it i'll get my voice generated okay we will get our voice generated over here fine whatever voice is generated i want to get it so i will say that whatever voice is being generated i want that voice uh, i want to listen to that voice basically okay so i will ask my laptop that okay speak based on the voice that has been generated okay now uh, let's go ahead once again in thing that i have missed yes i have not updated the translation in our variable okay whatever is that translated text based on that it will be speaking and whatever it will be speaking i will try to get it all right that's most probably it uh, let me save my code any error in my code let me check Uh, any other error that I have missed? Mm -hmm. Over here. Ah, fine. There was a syntax issue which I corrected. Now let's go ahead. Let's see. Uh, now remember, guys, whenever I'll be using these AI services. uh sometimes we'll be getting errors not because our code is wrong uh, but uh, sometimes these services uh, because of high traffic uh they cannot be accessed so at that time you get a random error but let's see here what happened and if that error gets vanished after 4 or 5 minutes so it's not a case of worry but remember that most of the times throughout the lecture we might see some errors that is not related i mean that uh, and it's not uh, because of our code okay issue won't be in our code mostly it's because that service uh, has a high traffic so it's not available fine anyways and that issue gets resolved after 4 uh, or 5 minutes so it's not a big worry anyways let's go ahead let me run the code ha ah, it says target language not defined let's correct the error now this is uh, our coding error so let's correct it uh target language okay i would want to place this so let me do one thing at starting my target language will be nothing okay while target language is not equal to quit i want to continue with the loop so i've done that change ha ah. so i will say uh, enter a target language let's say i am entering hindi and then i will speak something let's see okay here i get a error it's a run time error let's try to see what is that run time error uh okay, let me place this in the appropriate parameter now let me try hi i am in a webinar okay i don't know whether you heard it or not i heard the song okay so let me share the sound as well so let me do one thing i'll present my screen again but this time i will also share the sound of my computer okay i'll include sound so i don't know whether you heard or not i heard it okay so let me run it again hi 
we are in a webinar session namaste hum ek webinar satra mein hain okay did you guys hear it i don't know i heard it i don't know whether you guys heard it or not somitra everybody else did you guys hear it the translation was it audible yes okay heard it okay fine so you can see our code works right let me convert it to kannada language and let's see we are studying about the azure platform now azure platform bage adhyayana madutiddeve yeah i got some translation maybe kannada people can cross check whether it's right or wrong let me convert it to spanish language so i'll write es for spanish let me see good morning we are in a session related to artificial intelligence buenos días estamos en una sesión relacionada con la inteligencia artificial okay so i got the spanish translation in there now what i will do is i will just give the code to you guys just do one thing don't uh, all you have to do is uh, replace the key uh section with the key of your resource okay the rest of the code will remain the same so i'm pasting the code in the chat for every one of you so run this code only as it is uh is this that here in the key section uh place your key okay whatever key uh, you have for the resource that you have created you will go ahead and place that key now uh, let me take some of the doubts so somnatra had asked can you please show again the copilot screen to provision access to yourself she you showed this in initial part where you mean when i was showing the ai services that that screen that screen are you talking about so that one second i got a new message Yes. Okay. So Amitra says yes. Okay. So this was that uh, page. Sorry, not this. Ah, huh, this this was that page. Yes. So what uh, about this page, so Amitra? Any doubt? You ask. Let me read it again. You ask. Can you please show again the co-pilot screen? The provision access to your. No. This was just to. Uh, show you the different uh, services okay i mean if you want the link of this you can get the link and check uh, whether you can uh, try to create a free account or not i'll paste the link again for you i is that what you are asking or something else then let me know uh then i have another doubt from somitra somitra say that at some point can you discuss the utility of this certification for job switch okay so let me clear this part guys that uh are certifications enough to for a job switch uh, the answer is yes you will be able to clear the hr round but uh, the certification value is just up to hr round only so let's say you have passed certification by going through uh exam dumps that are available online so you actually don't know much about the concepts in the certification however you pass the certification and obtain the certification in that case the certification holds no value at all so to answer your question does it help in job switch only up till the first round which is the hr round after that just uh, that certification has no value they will be asking you questions based on the concepts in it if you answer those will be in or else that certification won't hold who uh, will not hold any value so the value is only up till hr not beyond that okay because the evaluators know whoever is evaluating you from the tech team they would know how people get certification nowadays because they themselves would have done that right for example when i, I was starting i used to go through dumps and pass the certifications uh then of course i made sure that i learn all the concepts and the certification and so on so yes to answer your question it helps only up to lecture round not after that and this applies to any azure certification 
not just AI 102. Let's say you are going for any other certification, something like DP 203, uh, AI 050, any other. Same thing applies. So Saravana says, can we run Python code in Colab or Jupyter? Anywhere. Uh, oh, anyway, up to you. Whichever uh, tool works for you. Okay, it it does not matter which tool you are running. Is that that tool should support uh, Python programming language and both Colab and Jupyter support. So we can try it out in any tool. Pratimesh, which Python concepts are required? Pratimesh, I would suggest you to go through entire Python. So uh, you will see some courses online with uh, analytics with Python, right? Where they will not only cover Python fundamentals, but they will also cover some of the Python libraries that are used for analysis. So at least I would expect each and every one of you to know up till that point. Okay, so you should be at least a uh, average Python programmer. Because for uh, working with these AI services, mostly you will be using Python. Other option is you use C sharp. Okay, so you can use C sharp as well. But I would still prefer you to use Python. It's much more easy. Okay. So yeah, uh, you should be an average Python programmer. You can search online for any available free course like Python for analytics. Okay, where they will not only cover Python fundamentals, but they will also cover libraries for analysis like NumPy, Pandas and other libraries. Okay. Uh, now, Abhijit, Abhijit is asking, can you share this code snippet again? Yes, I'll share it again. Let me copy my code and share it. Okay, then I have other doubts. Okay, so Sri Devi has uh, pasted a screenshot of her work so she is able to do that translation so that's good Sri Devi has practiced on a laptop she is able to do it Pratamesh any specific laptop specification okay so Pratamesh it depends whether you are creating an AI model yourself or you are just using the AI model that is created by someone else so for example Pratamesh can I say up till now what we have done is we have just used the AI model that someone else has created right Pratamesh we use this speech uh, AI model. We did not create it. It was created by Azure. We just used it. Now for that, any basic laptop would work. Even a 30,000, 35,000 laptop would work, right? However, if you are creating your own AI model, that's a different thing. Then I would prefer that, you know, you have at least uh, 16 GB of RAM. If not, uh, although, People online say 8 GB is sufficient, but I don't think so. Uh, for making very advanced AI models, 8 GB of RAM would not be sufficient. However, minimum should be 8. Below 8, uh, you will not be able to effectively you know, uh, create advanced AI models. So yeah, uh, minimum 8 GB RAM, preferably 16 GB. Okay. Uh, so in, in that case, maybe your laptop cost will be around uh, one lakh or something around that. If you want to create your own AI models. However, if you just want to use AI models that someone else has created, any basic laptop would do what? 30,000 laptop would work, even a 25,000 laptop would work. Just basic thing you are doing. You are not creating any models. So specification, any basic laptop would work for that. Okay, so Pratimesh, to answer your question for creating your own AI model, yes, you will need a good laptop somewhere around in the range of 1 lakh rupees. But if you're just create, uh, just using a, a AI model created by someone else, a basic laptop would work anywhere in, in the range of 25 to 30,000. Okay, Abhinav says, can you tell which extension you are using with VS Code? Uh, uh, Abhinav, I'm not using any extension whatsoever. Every connection is being done through this code only. I have not used any extension. Okay, your for uh, our today's webinar, no extension is needed for connecting Visual Studio Code with Azure. 
is just that what I did was I installed the these uh, Azure libraries in my uh, Visual Studio code. Okay, just like how we do, right? Pip install and then the name of the library. So I did just that. However, in my case, today I did not have to install it in front of you because I already have it installed in my laptop, right? So this uh, this Azure library is already there. So you just need to uh, install this Azure library and that's it. And then based on the code only, you will be able to connect. So no extension of it. Let me take the other doubts. So Amadra says, so it does not do any I am with the resource. Yeah. Huh, yes, absolutely, Swamitra. Yes. So for using these services, just the key is required. Now, if you want to put more security over it, you can. But by default, only key is required. OK, if you want to put more security over your resource, obviously you can uh, go ahead and do that. But that is uh, advanced part for now. We won't talk about it. But yes, can you add more security? Yes, but by default, it only asks for key. So yes, for now, it will only ask for key. If somebody has the key of your resource, they will be able to use it. Uh, Abhinav says uh, AI services does not work with 3.12 version of Python. It works. It absolutely works. OK, any Python version above three is uh, suitable for uh, any job, not just working with these AI services, but anything that is available online that uses Python or that requires Python. Anything above version three is fine. Okay, so for to answer your question, whether 3.12 version works, yes, it absolutely works. Uh, Sri Devi says, Sri Devi has mentioned, I was talking about that library, right? That what library I installed, I told you we have to uh, use that pip install command. Sri Devi has mentioned the command in the chat. Uh, Nagesh says, will average Python knowledge be enough to get a job? Okay, let's understand Nagesh. So when I say average Python knowledge, that is just the ABC. Now let's say Nagesh, you want to work as a journalist. Okay. So Nagesh will uh, knowing just ABC get you a job as a journalist. No, right? So when I say that, okay, uh, you need to have average knowledge of Python. That is just the ABC of this artificial intelligence field. Now with that Python, what next you do that is entirely different. You need to understand how to create your own machine learning models. You need to understand how to create your own AI models. Even then, so three things I mentioned. Python basic is one. Then you need to understand how to create your own own machine learning models, not use the models that are available on it. You have to know, understand how to create your own machine learning models. Then you have to understand how to create your own deep learning models. Even that will not be sufficient to land you a job as a fresher, remember, because there are many, many people, thousands of people who know these stuff. Okay, but as a fresher, it will be difficult. So what do you do? You learn more things along with it because, for example, startups don't just want you to work on the AI part. OK, they don't just want you to just create machine learning models, deep learning models. They also want to work, want you to work on the ops part, operations part. So there is a field called ML ops that is being uh, popular nowadays. OK, so if you know ops now, very less people know ops. OK. So if you know much uh, like AI as well as ops, there are more chances for you to get in. OK, on top of that right now. Uh, there is this uh, uh, craze about Gen AI. So Gen AI is an extension of AI. However, it does slightly different thing. I should not talk about for today. So yes, you need to understand. So as I said, AI is one. Then you need to understand how Gen AI works. Now, if you understand Gen AI, now, I repeat, Gen AI is not something that many, many people know. Fine, they would know how to use Gen AI models that are available online. But how do you create your own Gen AI model? They do not know that. But any 8 hour to 10 hour course on YouTube will make you understand the same. But what should be your goal? First, to understand how does Python work. Okay. Second, 
you need to understand how machine learning works. So after Python, machine learning comes under AI, right? So you, I would say under AI, you will need to understand how machine learning and deep learning works. Okay, create machine learning models, create deep learning models. That means you know the field of AI. After that, I would ask you to focus on Gen AI. Once that is done, uh, I mean, this is good enough for you to land a fresher job. But still, let's say you are from a tier two city, you have less uh, uh, options with you, right? Less uh, opportunities with you. I would ask you to go for ops. Okay. Fine. So there is a field nowadays that is very popular ML ops, AI ops, okay, DL ops. You can go ahead and uh, focus on that. But at least these three things you should do. If you just do these two things, I don't think you will get a job as a fresher. Okay. Fine. If you are experienced enough, and uh, that's a different thing, but as a fresher, you won't get. It will be very hard to get. That's what I'm saying. If by luck you get, that's different. But I don't see many people getting job just by these two things. Let me view the messages. Pratmesh, with the help of Power Platform, can we achieve something like this? Okay. Power Platform uh, is a side uh, uh, tool that everybody of you should know. Okay. So whether it's working with Power BI or any other power platform. OK, um, but just learning that won't be sufficient. OK, so just learning that won't be sufficient. So you at least need to get these three ops if you uh, let it go even that's fine. But these three should be there. Everything else like let's say power platform is a subsidiary. I mean, it's fine if you have knowledge well and good. If you don't have, I mean, uh, it won't create that much of a problem. But if you have that knowledge, then put it to lack a subsidiary. But it's not a very important thing as such in job environment. OK, no company asks that. OK, if you have a power platform knowledge, you don't have AI knowledge, then OK, come come to our company as a AI. So in the field of AI, learn these three things that I have circled. Apart from that, the other things that you gain knowledge of, that is good. Absolutely good. It will definitely help you in your team somewhere in your company somewhere. Maybe in your company later, they might ask you to do some work on power platform apart from this all work. So yes, it will definitely help, but don't treat it as a main thing. How much time is required? To, OK, so so it depends that like, do you know how machine learning models work? Do you know how deep learning models work? Like, do you know the basics of uh, for example, let me ask you about a machine learning model algorithm called uh, logistic regression. You know, ah, th then it's very simple, buddy, for you. If you know these machine learning model algorithms, you know uh, the deep learning. Uh, how can you create a deep learning model? Then it's very easy. I don't think it will take you more than uh, I would say four to five days. Okay. In order to cover AI 102, you need to cover all these labs. I'll just show those labs for you. Let me show them to you. So there are many labs. I don't think it will take you more than four to five days. So these are the labs you can see. So for example, here we did a lab called translate speech. If I click on it, all these steps will be mentioned as to how you can go ahead. OK, so you have to cover these labs. There are many such labs. I don't think it will take you more than four to five days. If you are proficient on machine learning and deep learning, if you are not proficient, then obviously it will take much, much more time. Machine learning itself might take you around seven, eight days. Deep learning itself might take you around another seven, eight days minimum. Uh, Prathmesh says, ah, again, so uh, like uh, Prathmesh says, RPA tool is like UiPath. Again, it's not a main thing. It's good if you have it, but not a main thing. Okay. 
and samatra so i take the class on january usually sunday morning acha okay good to know okay fine all right uh, so guys we have completed one ai service right we use one ai service called speech service now we'll take a short tea break of 20 minutes we'll come back after 20 minutes and uh, continue our journey today okay up till now whatever it did guys did it make sense i know those people who are not familiar with python programming language maybe the syntax didn't make sense uh, but i hope like it was little understandable to you guys yes any doubts in the first demo that we did if there are any doubts you can let me know okay i don't see any okay now it says yes making sense obviously it also say yes okay fine so let's take a short tea break of around 19 minutes or so and we'll be back after that okay so i'll set the timer and till then i'll be on mute
हेलो गाइस आई शेयर द एआई वन जीरो टू कॉम्प्लीमेंट टू लर्निंग अचीवमेंट बैचेस ऑन चैट बॉक्स प्लीज फॉलो द स्टेप एंड गेट योर एक्टिवेटेड बैचेस आफ्टर रिडीम योर बैचेस प्लीज टूट डन ऑन चैट बॉक्स सो आई विल लेट यू नो हु आर डन विद द बैचेस Welcome back to the session, everyone. Hope all of you are back after the break. So let's move ahead. Before moving ahead, just put a message in the chat whether you guys are back or not. Everybody is back. Let's put a confirmation in the chat. Yes, that's me. Okay. Pranav says, "Can we get the source code? Uh, you mean source code for the first?" Uh, Demo that we did, right? I put the code already. Let me put it once again. All right. So I've mentioned the source code. All you need to do is just do one change in it. Make sure that you mention the key for the resource that you create, and place that key over here. In this line of code, okay. That's the only thing that you need to change in this code. Rest all the things you will keep it as it is. Fine. All right. So, guys, we have seen demo of uh, one category of Azure AI service called Azure AI Speech. Now let's talk about Azure AI Vision. Okay. So, with respect to Azure AI Speech, we only saw one demo. However, with respect to Azure AI Vision, I will be showing you many demos. Okay, so uh, we will be learning how to detect uh, objects in the image. We'll be learning how to detect people in the image. We'll be learning how to detect text in the image, and so on. Okay, so we'll be seeing many such demos. All right, so let's go ahead and let's see. So Azure AI Vision is all about analyzing things in images and videos whether it's to analyze objects in the images or videos whether it's to analyze text in the images or videos whether it's to analyze people in images or videos and so on. all right let's go ahead 
So what I will do is I'll go to my Azure portal. And now I will ask Azure to help me give access to the vision service, the Azure AI vision service that is your office. All right, so what I'll do, I'll go to the search section and search for Azure AI services. Click on the first search result that pops up. And now I can go ahead and I can create a resource of the vision service if I want to. OK, uh, so we are getting a understanding over here that for creating a resource of different different services, you have options available over here on the left hand side. For example, the if you want to create a resource of speech service, you click on this button. If you want to create a resource of language service, you click on this button and so on. So they will create a resource of that particular service. Now let me show you a shortcut. So instead of creating a resource for uh, each service individually, is there a way I can create a resource one time and that resource I can use for multiple services like speech service, vision service, document service and so on? Yes, there is. And that option is available over here. I'm highlighting that option. OK, you can read it out. It's called Azure AI services multi service account. With this, you will create a resource one time, but that resource will be used across services. It can be used in a speech service. It can be used in vision service. It can be used in any other service. OK, let me go ahead and click on it. Let me create a resource of this service. When I click on the create button, it will redirect me to a form that I have to fill. First field in the form is asking me to select subscription. So I will choose the subscription of my choice. The second field in the form is asking me to select resource group. So now we are creating a resource of this service. So it has to fall within some of the other resource group. So I already created a resource group for the demo that I showed you before the break, right? So the resource that I'm creating after the break will also fall within the same resource group. OK, uh, it will help me for better resource management. Let's say after the lecture ends, I want to delete all the resources. Instead of deleting the resources one by one individually, I can directly delete the resource group in which those resources are contained. And with that, all the resources in that resource group will be deleted in one go. Fine. Anyways, let's go ahead. After that, the next field in the form is asking me to choose the region for the resource. We'll choose a region that is closer to our user for better latency. Let's say we are creating this resource for a user in the United States. So we'll choose a region that is closer to United States. After that, the next field in the form is asking me to put a name to the resource. So let me give a name. I'll say test multi resource. All right, next it is asking me to choose the pricing tier for the resource. So let me select the pricing tier. You would see the option of free pricing tier over here as well. However, I have exhausted the limit of free tier. That's why I do not see that option. Fine, let's go ahead. And uh, now I want to keep every network setting same. I want to keep every identity setting same. I want to keep any tag setting same. I directly want to jump to review plus create. So there is a button over here that will help you to directly jump to review plus create. Let me click on that button and Azure will run a final validation to check what I uh, to check whether Azure can give me what I'm asking for. And it has run that final validation. Validation was successful. So Azure asks you that OK, validation is successful. Now if you want to create the resource, you can so go ahead and create the resource. By create by clicking on the create button. And we'll wait for around one or two minutes and soon the resource should be created. So guys, I repeat now I'll be showing you a demo of the second service, which is vision service. Before the tea break, we saw a demo of one service already, which was speech service. Now it's time to show you a demo of the second service for today, which is vision service. All right, so the resource for this service has been created. Let me go to the resource. And 
after that, let me jump on to the keys and endpoint section over here. OK, here I will add information of everything that is needed to gain access to the resource. Fine, now let's go ahead. Now, I'll do one thing. Let me create a folder called Vision Service. Inside it, I'll create a file called Analyze Images. By. So I will be analyzing the people in the images. I'll be analyzing the objects and the images. On top of that, if the resource can give me information about what is there in the image. For example, let's say there is a person who is walking a dog. Then the resource should tell me that caption correctly that OK, the person is walking a dog. So I want to analyze caption. That is one. Right? I gave you an example of caption that a person is walking a dog in the image. So that resource, the uh, resource that I've created should tell me that. I should not look at the image and figure out what is happening. The resource should tell me what is happening in the image. OK, so I'll be analyzing captions of the image. Uh, on top of that, if there are any objects detected, then uh, the, I want my resource to automatically give tags to it. For example, it sees a dog, then it should give a tag to it called dog. It sees a toy, it should give a tag to it called toy. So I want to analyze tags available in the image in this time. Fine, so I want to do that. Let's see how to do it. So I've created this coding file. Let's go ahead start and, and start writing our code. Uh, now, uh, let me show you what images I'll be analyzing. So let me show you that. OK, so I have three images over here. First is that of a building. Second is that of a person called Satya Nadella. Third is that of a street. OK. So I want to analyze these images. So let's go ahead and let's see how to do that. So let's start by writing a code. So first, uh, let me go ahead and let me mention the endpoint for the resource. So how will I be? How will I be able to get access to the resource? Let's see. So over here, if you go to the keys and endpoint section, you will see a endpoint of the resource. Let me copy it and paste it over here. So this is the link using which you can gain access to the resource. But just the link will be sufficient. No. You will need the key to access the resource as well. So let me go ahead and let me mention the key as well. I'll go ahead and mention the key as well. All right, that's done. Now let's go ahead. So what I will do is I'll go ahead and uh, try to connect to the resource that I created just five minutes back on the Azure platform. In order to do it, I'll need help of a class which I will import. So in order to connect to this uh, vision resource that I created, right? In order to connect to the resource of the vision service, you know, I will need to uh, use a class. So let me import it first. So from Azure folder, there is a subfolder called AI. From that subfolder, there is another subfolder called vision. Inside that subfolder, I have a file called image analysis. And from that file, I have the, I will import this uh, class called image analysis client. OK, now I will use the class and this class will help me to connect to the resource that I created five minutes back on the Azure portal. So first I will mention the endpoint of the resource. That means the link at which the resource is available for use. OK, let me get the link. After that, the second thing that I need is I need to mention the key in order to gain access to the resource. In order to do that, I'll need help of a function which I will import first. So uh, what I will do is from Azure folder, there is another subfolder called core. From that subfolder, there is a file called credentials. And from that file, I will try to import this function called Azure key credential. I'll use this function 
and using the function i'll pass my key as a credential so let me go ahead let me pass my key all right and with this what will happen is i will gain a connection to the resource okay again a connection to the resource fine uh, now let's see what to do next so using the resource we want to analyze some of the images now whatever image we want to analyze uh, we need to get data of that image in the form of hexadecimal okay so in order to convert image data to hexadecimal let me show you what to do so i will say open the image now which image let me mention the path over here i'll say go into the images folder inside it there is a file called building.jpg so i want to open the image in this file path and i want to read it in such a way that i get get data in hexadecimal format so i'll write this code called rb that means read it in such a way that i get data in hexadecimal format okay now let's go ahead and uh, let me go ahead and read the data in the image in such a way that the data is obtained in hexadecimal format and let me print that data for you i'll go ahead and print that data and let's see what happens so first of all this coding file is in this folder called version service i'll open the terminal up till that point okay and you can see the terminal now is pointing to this folder called vision service inside this there is a file called analyze images.py i'll go ahead and i'll try to run the code inside of it and you can see i've got image data in hexadecimal format you can see this entire thing is hexadecimal okay fine so i just wanted to show to you that okay we are getting data in hexadecimal format now i have removed that uh, print line so now nothing should be printed okay well, let's see what to do next now so after uh, getting the image data in hexadecimal format i will ask my resource to perform an analysis on this image data which is there in hexadecimal format let me analyze that image i'll go ahead and analyze the image and what do i want to analyze so i'll have to mention things that i want to analyze over here let me go ahead and let me mention the same the first thing that i want to analyze is the caption so in order to do this i will have to perform my import so let me go ahead and let me do that first so let me complete this particular import and then i'll show you what to do next okay so what are the visual features that i want to analyze i want to analyze the caption in the image so let's say if, if there is a uh, image in which a person is walking a dog that resource should tell me that okay in the image there is a person who is walking a dog okay uh, that image should uh, let me know that automatically so caption generation is one second i want to analyze the tags of the things that are detected in the image second i want to detect the objects in the image apart from people all the other non living things will be treated as object but uh, if at all there are any living thing like for example let's say there are any people i want to analyze those as well that where are those people how many people are there and so on okay fine uh, let's go ahead and uh, let's get the result to this and whatever is the result i'll print it out for you first i'll print it out in its raw form we'll see later how to uh, print it out in a better manner first let me print it out in a raw form okay currently i have a error let's see what is that error
not see any. Okay, it says analyze. Uh, my mistake. It should be with a Z. Okay, so there was a spelling mistake. Okay, now let's see. Okay, and you can see I, I've got the analysis result. I have got a lot of information, the model the version that was used, caption results. So for example, in this building we have a white house, right? So it generates a caption saying a large white building with a dome and a large lawn with United States capital in the background. Okay. Uh, fine, so it has generated this caption. There are other tags that it has generated. For example, first tag is outdoor. Second tag is cloud. Third tag is tree. Fourth tag is sky and so on. Other things also. Fine, all right. So it has, uh, I've printed the result in its raw form. Let me print it in a much better way. So I will say that the caption is this one. Okay, I'll go ahead and run the code. Let me check. OK, I'm getting a dictionary as a caption here inside the dictionary. I'm only looking at this particular value. In order to get the value in a dictionary, I have to focus on the key of the dictionary, which is called TXT. So let me write it in my code that give me the value. That is present in the dictionary at the key called TXT. Fine, let's do that and let's see what happens. OK, so I'm getting the caption apart from caption. Let me also print uh, the confidence that the resource has in generating that caption, that how much confident it is that whatever uh, caption it has given is exactly what is happening in the image. Okay, so let me go ahead do that change. I'll just go ahead and run the code. So my confidence value will be in the form of a float. That means it will be in the form of decimal value. And uh, confidence will always be between 0 and 1. Uh, in order to convert to percentage, you have to multiply by 100. OK, so we'll go ahead and do that later on. So let's say if the confidence value is 0 0.9. That means the uh, resource is 90% confident. If the confidence is uh, 0 0.8, that means the uh, resource is 80% confident and so on. All right, let's do it. Let's go ahead to complete writing our code. Just go ahead, complete it, and we'll see what to do next. I think it was called confidence only. Although, since it's between 0 and 1, I'll have to multiply it by 100 later. OK, so it has generated this caption and the confidence is about 64.52%. All right, uh, so apart from caption, what other things we wanted to analyze? Next is tags. OK, so I've got a lot of tags, right? So I'll have to run a loop because if I show it to you, you will observe that there are a lot of tags in the list. Let me show that to you. You can see this is the list that has been given to me and there are a lot of tags in it. So I'll run a loop over here. I will say for each tag in this tag list. Print the tag information as well as the confidence that we have in the tag. So I'll say print the tag information. And the confidence that you have in the tag. So I want the name of the tag. And I want the confidence that we have in that tag. OK, let's go ahead. Let's run the code. 
and you will see after caption i am also getting information about the tags let me print it once again now it will be printed in a much better manner but i've done one change in the code okay so i can see the caption and i can see the tags for example first tag is outdoor confidence is 99.93 percent and you can see the other tags as well so uh tag analysis was one next i wanted to analyze the objects in the image okay so let's go ahead and let's see how many objects are generated is it one or multiple it should be multiple still let's see let me get a list of all the objects i'll go ahead get a list of all the objects and let's see what happens next Okay. Here I it tells me only one object. Okay, and if I change my uh, file, let's say I change my image file, it is uh, written as tree dot jpg because in building dot jpg it's fine. It is detecting just one big object over here, which is the White House. Let me change it. Let's suppose I am analyzing this image called street. Then what happens? Then it should detect multiple uh, objects because in this image there are multiple objects. Let's see. Ah, and you can see over here for this image it has detected multiple objects. This is the information about first object. This is the information about second object, then third object, then fourth object. Okay, so multiple objects. So for example, for the first object. It has mentioned uh, the coordinates of it, right? So let's say there is a box over the object. Then obviously it will have a starting point x comma y. It has also mentioned the width of that object. For example, for the first object, the width is 282 pixels, right? And the height is 149 pixels. OK. Fine, so I have the information about the object also, the name of the object and the confidence that the resource has in that particular object that is detected. OK, fine, let's go ahead. So there are a lot of objects, so I'll have to run a loop over here. So I'll say for any object that is detected in your list, or any object that is detected in your list, please go ahead and print the name of it, as well as the confidence that we have in that tag. Okay. Also, please mention the name of that object as well as the confidence that we have in that particular object over here okay as well as the confidence fine now let's see what happens okay so for example it has detected four objects first object was car it has mentioned the confidence of it second object was taxi then person then dog so four objects it has detected fine what i want to do is uh, based on the analysis information i want to draw a box over the objects okay if you paid attention earlier two minutes back while detecting objects it was also giving me information about the coordinates of the object right so i want to draw a box over it how to draw a box? Let's go ahead and let's see. Okay. How would I draw a box over here? So, by the way, let me show it to you. Uh, how I am getting the result? Let me print the entire raw data of object analysis. Okay, here is the entire raw data. Fine. So for example, for the first object, this is the coordinate information. So let's say I have an object. Uh, it's X and Y coordinate is mentioned. Right? X and Y coordinate. 
then the width of that object is mentioned. In this case, the first object has a width of 282 pixels and it has a height of 149 pixels. So guys, if I want to draw a box, I need two points. First is this point, the one that I have drawn in blue. I know the coordinate of that point, it's x comma y. How to get coordinate of this point, this second blue point, this one? Can anyone mention it? How to get coordinate of that? How to get coordinate of that race? So can anyone mention it in the chat? What would it, what would it be? Anyone? Let me open up the chat. Okay, I can see some chats. Uh, Swamadra says, can you please share the labs link in the chat? Okay, I'll do that. I'll share the labs link. Then also and mention why hexadecimal. Abhi that, uh, so whoever created this model, he expected that whatever data is being inserted should be hexadecimal. Okay. Uh, now with hexadecimal, uh, the uh, you know operation on that image is done in a much faster way. Now you can do it without hexadecimal also. It's just that we don't have any control over it because this model was not made by us, right? Whoever made the model, he made it that way. That in order to use that model, if you are trying to analyze the image, make sure that the image data is in hexadecimal form. So we don't have any control. So if on the other hand, we had made the model, we would have been able to decide that exactly how I want my image data, right? But here, somebody else has created, so we have to follow their rules, right? We can't do anything. Abhijit says, is 64 Boson confidence enough? No. I would say unless what I've seen is less than... Uh, 80% confidence uh, is not that reliable as far as uh, the Azure AI services are concerned. Okay, but fine. It's okay. Uh, but less than 80%, I would not put a bet on it that it's always right. Okay. So obviously, yes, uh, to answer your question, I would not say it's enough. But again, we don't have any control. The model is not generated by us. So we can't suddenly improve the accuracy of the model. We don't have any control. Or we can do is we can just use it. We can just use the model. Now, if it gives incorrect, inaccurate results, then we can do. That's why there is a need that you should know how to make your own AI models as well. You should not just rely on someone else's AI models. Okay. Anyways, I wanted to get the coordinates. Huh? Venkata has given the coordinates for this point. Uh, for the one in blue, your sec second one. So as Venkata mentioned, it will be X plus W uh, will be the X axis coordinate and Y axis coordinate will be Y plus H. Perfect. So Venkata has given the perfect answer over here. And we'll go ahead and we'll mention the same. First, I'll get those coordinate values. So for that detected object, I'll get that coordinate values. Once I get the coordinate values, I will mention that my box that I want to draw should have which coordinates. So first coordinate will be X and Y only. First coordinate will be X and Y only. The second coordinate as Venkata mentioned was X plus W. X plus W and uh, Y axis coordinate that Venkata mentioned was Y plus H. So I'll go ahead and mention the same. Okay, fine. Uh, now let's go ahead. X plus width I should say. Y plus height. All right, now let's go ahead. And what I will do is I'll go ahead and I'll try to draw over this image. But before drawing, I will have to open the image first, right? After that, I'll be able to draw over the image. So I'll say, please open the image. Now, in order to open the image, I'll have to import something. I'll have to import a class. So from PIL file, there is a class called image. This class will help me to open the image. Okay. 
it will help me to open the image after which i'll be able to draw over it i'll say please open the image whose file path has been mentioned over here after opening the image what next to do let's see after the image is opened i will draw a canvas uh, so that i can draw something over that image so let me draw a canvas and the canvas will be the same as the figure size of this image that we have currently okay it will be the same as the figure uh, as the image size of the figure that i have it okay once this canvas is drawn using the canvas i will draw something on the image okay now let me put uh, let me mention over here that i will be drawing something in the image and in order to draw something i need a class which i will import so i will just mention it over here that going down the line i might draw something in the image so please allow all right and how will i be drawing it i'll be drawing it in some color let's say cr yeah, i can draw it in blue color red color any color okay fine now uh, i have mentioned that on this particular image i'll be drawing something but what exactly i'll be drawing so let let me mention that so i will say uh save this these these settings are available okay fine let's go ahead now i have mentioned over here what i'll be drawing and on which image i'll be drawing sorry i have mentioned on which image i'll be drawing but how exactly will the drawing look like let's see so i'll say draw a rectangle over the image okay on which image that information has been passed already okay draw a rectangle i'm passing the coordinates of the box that i want to draw a uh, box will have four sides the outline of the four sides will have a color of let's say cyan and the width of those four sides will be equal to 3 pixels so rectangle will consist of four lines right what will be the width of each of these four lines 3 pixels okay if you want a fatter uh, line you can increase the width over here it's up to you fine once the rectangle will be drawn what i want to do is i want to also mention what exactly uh, that object is so fine a rectangle will be drawn over that image but i also want to show what exactly that object is i'll show you how to do that but first let me just draw a rectangle over the image okay i'll just i'll then show the image after rectangle has been drawn over it and in fact let me save the results in a new output file let me save the results in a new output file i will say whatever drawing has been made on the canvas save it in a new image the name of it is objects.jpg okay fine and at last i'll just print to the user that results are saved Okay, let me go ahead, run again. Let's see what happens. Do I get an error or not? Okay, yes, here I get an error, and as uh, Venkata mentioned, I forgot to import a uh, matplotlib. Import matplotlib dot pyplot as plt. Okay, so from matplotlib folder, there is a file called pyplot, and I have imported it as plt. Inside that file, there was this function which I used. Okay, anyways, let's go ahead. Let's run the code. R dot sorry x my mistake. First coordinate will be x. comma y next coordinate will be x plus width comma y plus height right exactly at venkata has mentioned in the chat all right it says ah uh, rectangle spelling is wrong so i have corrected rectangle spelling let's see 
ha huh. now you can see it's saying that image size is too big okay let's see what image are we trying to draw okay i tried to draw something on the image using this canvas the canvas was having the same width and same height as the original image that i was working on now have a look this is a problem that we need to solve so what is the width of the image what is the height of the image let's see width and height of image width of original image and then height of original image let me print it to you guys so you can understand it better and we'll be able to solve this problem okay see guys the original width and height was what have a look the original uh, width one second is it printed why did it not print the error was while saving right ha ah. then did not ha ah, is printed yes sorry i missed it width of original image is 800 pixels height is 533 but have a look width was 800 but while saving it was getting converted to 80000 so from 800 it got converted to 80000 and this is what happens normally when you are trying to save a image that it get it gets multiplied by 100 i don't want to multiply it by 100 why because if i do it the pixel will be too large and i won't be able to save my data in the image right so what i will do is if it's getting multiplied by 100 in order to convert it back to its original value i will divide by 100 i'll do it for the width as well as for height for example original height was 533 it got converted to 53300 that means got multiplied by 100 fine but i want to convert it back to the same value 53 how do i do it i'll have to divide the height by 100 so divide the width by 100 divide the height by 100 that's what i will have to do and that's exactly how this uh, issue will be solved fine so let's do it divide the width by 100 divide the height by 100 and once i do that you will see that the issue will vanish you can see the issue vanished my results are now saved in this file called objects.jpg and you can see i wanted to put rectangles over the objects that are detected and i have been able to do that guys i have been able to put rectangles okay but this looks uh, slightly untidy so let me do one thing uh i can make this even more better i can see this padding over here this white uh, padding across all the four sides i want to remove it so if i want to remove the padding what i will do is here i will just mention that please remove the padding so that i have a tight layout please remove the padding padding will be equal to zero no padding at all now let's i will see that the padding that we had earlier will vanish so you will see that previously we had a lot of white space it has now vanished now the only thing that is left is these ticks these are called axis ticks t i c k s okay axis ticks i want to remove those as well how to remove these axis ticks i'll go ahead and show that to you in order to remove the axis ticks all you have to do is just mention in the code that while plotting make sure the the axis ticks are off i'll go ahead and do the small change let's see what happens and now you will see those axis ticks also gone this is much better sir fine so i am able to see the i am able to put a rectangle over the objects but how do i know what that object is so luckily i have got tag related information right i will also put a tag over this uh, rectangle that i have drawn so over here i'll just mention in my code that i want to or mention that tag okay and let me go ahead and let me get that particular tag get the tag and mention its name okay where will i mention i will mention it exactly where the rectangle is starting 
rectangle is starting at this coordinate x comma y so i want my text to also be start started from there then what will be the background color of the text so i will say same as earlier which is cyan okay now let's see now this uh, result will be much better now not only i, I will uh, not only you will see a rectangle over the objects but you will also see a text as to what that object is so for example uh, this object is a person next object is a taxi next object is a normal car next object is a dog and so on. that is what this model has detected okay it it can do some mistakes uh, again i repeat this this model is not created by you it's created by someone else there is likely uh, there is higher chance that you will have some mistakes here and there but it's still fairly good okay if you want to make sure that you build a i mean you if you are unsatisfied with the performance of the model you can create your own ai model as well that's also fine okay and previously before uh, two or three years people used to do that we we used to create our own ai models for these tasks i've uh, taken many lectures where you know in my class we have done this without the use of ready made ai models we created our own ai models and it was very very easy not hard at all okay fine so we have detected the uh, objects now what i want to do is uh, i just want to detect person okay i just want to detect people not just uh, not all objects just people if you just want to detect people you can also do that let me go ahead and let me show to you how you do it first let me give you a full list of people and remember guys that it can do mistakes okay and you will see most probably over here it might do some mistakes while uh, detecting people i'll show you what people it has detected and so on fine it has given this raw data here again uh, it has mentioned the coordinate of that person that it has detected the confidence that it has in its detection and so on like this this is the data for second person then third person and so on Fine. So a lot of people are detected. So I'll say that again, same as above. I'll do the exact same thing over here, but this time it will be for people. Okay, I will say for each detected people. Go ahead. Get. The bounding board, which is fine. This is also fine. Uh, we'll draw a rectangle. That is absolutely perfect. No need of printing this. And I'll save it in a different file called people.jpg. Okay. Let's see what happens next. now hopefully i should get information about people that are detected and have a look now it has detected uh, all the living beings over here okay and uh, it can do some mistakes like for example here it is doing mistakes although here we do not have a dog still it is detecting as a dog here it is treating this person as a dog although i'll do this one thing oh, sorry my tag generation is different my mistake i should write the correct code for it over here in fact why would i assign a tag it's just the person right so it should not uh, 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 there is no need of tag let me remove tags by mistake what i did the same code that i used earlier huh same tags i assigned over here as well that is what created that issue okay let's see it should detect people now okay and you can see there was person over here it detected it person over here person over here this person and you can see it has done some mistakes like for example here in this box there is no new person but it still detected it again here i don't think these were photos of people i think they were photos of footwear but still it detected it as a person so as i told you it, it can do some mistakes 
but these are ready made ai models you can't do anything to change it right all you can do is use it if you are unhappy with it create we can create our own ai models up to us and that's why you have uh, still uh, demand in the industry for people who can create your own ai models right not all ready made ai models will be useful for all of all your tasks sometimes it can be mistakes as well okay fine so this was uh, our second demo right wherein we try to use uh, a resource of vision service before the tea break we try to use a resource of speech service after the tea break we use the resource of vision service right uh, i'll give you the code the only thing that you should change is the key in it one second i cannot move my cursor why what happened not able my cursor Where did the cursor go? Somehow. Ah, okay. Now I can. Okay. Fine. All right. So I'll give you my coding file. Uh, just change the key in it, and you will be able to use it. Okay. I've given the coding file as well. Uh, so, uh, guys, one person was asking me for the lab details, right? So you can get list of all the labs of AI one zero two over here. I'm pasting the link of it. So we have done two labs already. First was translate speech, right? So we try to use the resource of speech service. We did this. Uh, next, we uh, try to analyze images. So this is also done, right? Uh, you can view it, and it will almost follow the same steps. Uh, I guess it has used some different libraries, but that's fine. It has done same things. Maybe different libraries it has used, or is it same libraries? Uh, slightly different libraries. Not an issue. It has still done the same thing. Okay, just like us, it has done the same thing. It's just that it has used a different code. Again, there are multiple ways to write code, right? I use this code. Here it has uh, written slightly different code. Okay, slightly different libraries. So up to you. But yeah, you can follow this. I've given the link of all the labs. So we have already done two labs. Okay. The code that I used would be slightly different to what these labs are using, but end goal is the same. Okay. We are arriving at the same uh, end result. That's what matters. Okay, so up till now, making sense, guys, to everyone. Venkata, Abhijit, Swamitra, Pranav, everybody else. Making sense? Any doubts? Yes, Swamitra, okay. Fine. All right, uh, so we'll do one thing. Uh, Venkata says, yes, everything is clear. Okay. Pratmesh says, do we have a... Uh, ML ops or AI ops lab? No, unfortunately, Prathmish and uh, AI 102, we do not. No, we do not over it. Abhijit, so we can test on other images? Yes, absolutely. Test on other images, buddy. Code will be the same that I provided, but yes, images will be different. So yes, do test on other images and see how it works. Uh, Saravana says, which tool you are using for Python coding? You mean the uh, software? It's called Visual Studio Code. Yeah. And uh, the libraries, as you can see, it's the Azure libraries. And uh, while importing, you can see the names over here. Okay, so for example, if I show to you, for this second lab, which was analyzing images, you would have to install this library. Okay, Azure Cognitive Services Library. Uh, so these are the libraries uh, that I'm using. For first lab, I use a different library. I did not install it because in my laptop it was already installed. Similarly, for the second demo also, we had to install this library, but I did not install it because it was already installed. So you need this Azure library with you. 
that is one and second i am using visual studio code nothing else i am using not pi pi okay by the way even you can write the code in another any, uh, any other platform as well apart from visual studio code the code will still work so irrespective of where we are writing python code code will still work there are any other doubts you can let me know we are not using pi pi over here to answer your doubt okay fine uh, so let's take uh, our lunch break okay we'll take lunch break up till uh, 2 pm and after that uh, we'll come back uh, abhi says so compared to open c yes yes absolutely abhi yes compared to the open c uh, open cv uh, models absolutely so priya you might be familiar right like few years back we used to use open c for all of this stuff and it was fine, but uh, I mean, still, I mean, using OpenSea, you can even make better models than these. But yes, in general, uh, if you are starting off, you are an average developer, let's assume uh, that you are an average developer, then instead of OpenSea, you should definitely use this. But let's say if you are very experienced, in that case, you can even make better models than this one. So for example, I remember I tried to create a traffic sign detector uh, in my class uh, like three to four years back. And I remember that that particular model is still accurate than uh, what Azure is offering right now. So it depends. Okay. Not all of my models are better than what Azure is offering. Some of my models are better. So it depends. Okay. You can make models better than what Azure is offering. Absolutely you can. But yes, most of the times Azure models will turn out to be better than whatever else you are doing. Okay, I hope I answered your doubt. If at all there is any other doubt, you can help me. Okay, so let's take a uh, lunch break. Yes, I covered it out really. Okay. So let's take a lunch break. We'll come back at 2 p.m. and after 2 p.m. we'll continue our AI journey. Okay, up till now we have just seen two labs. We'll try to cover more labs after the lunch break. All right, so let's take a lunch break. Till then, I'll just be on mute. Okay, uh, one student, uh, Somitra is asking, what is the plan for afternoon? So Somitra, uh, we will try to cover uh, more vision services labs. And if I get time, I will try to show you labs of uh, document intelligence as well. Okay, but plan is to cover. Uh, uh, so the original idea is to cover four labs today. Two of which we have already done. Uh, however, if we get time, we'll cover more than that as well. To be specific, uh, the remaining labs will revolve around vision service. So for vision service, we'll see more labs. Uh, if possible, we get time for document intelligence service. We'll see that also. Okay. So apart from these two services, we won't see anything else. So that's the plan. Bots, no, we won't be doing bots today. Okay, because that uh, is slightly lengthy, and uh, I don't think we'll be able to cover today in our free time. So bots, we won't be able. To. Fine. So let's take a lunch break. Till then, I'll be on mute and we'll come back at 2 p.m. 